Welcome to this video where we delve deep into the captivating realms of spirituality, exploring Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption and the Bhagavad Gita. By understanding the concepts that we will be sharing here with you, you will be opening a new door to manifestation as you allow your desires to flow into your life. Throughout this discussion, we'll examine the similarities and differences between these profound teachings and explore the concepts of detachment from fruit of action in the Bhagavad Gita and it is done and live in the end by Neville Goddard. So if you're ready, let's embark on this enlightening journey together. Ever since I was really little, I've been fascinated by the concept of desires and how we create our realities. But being born in the eastern part of the world, I was introduced to the concept of detachment and renouncement of material things from a fairly young age. But when I looked around, the entire world seemed material, which was very confusing to me. So for a while, I completely forgot about the Eastern teachings. And once I was in my mid-twenties, that's when my journey to discover the secret to achievement and manifesting began. As I read tons of books based on the concept of law of attraction, I finally discovered the principles of Neville Goddard and most of my queries regarding manifesting and accomplishment of goals started to settle in. But every time I was on to manifest certain goals into my life, this nagging question kept coming up. But what about detachment? Because every once in a while when I was trying to attain really big goals, I used to be totally consumed by the idea of having it and not always positively because sometimes my mind would be filled with worries and doubt, which led me to pick up the Bhagavad Gita once again. And the answers that I discovered from this new state of mind was amazing and manifesting different goals really started to become effortless in my life. That's why I wanted to compare and contrast the teachings of Neville Goddard and the Law of Assumption with that of Bhagavad Gita, the sacred text of Hinduism with you today. More importantly, I practice the principles from both these teachings side by side in my everyday life and as I do this, my life has become even more fulfilled than I could have ever imagined. So let's begin by providing a brief introduction to the Bhagavad Gita and Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption. The Bhagavad Gita is a sacred Hindu scripture that serves as a guide to righteous living and spiritual enlightenment. And Neville Goddard's teachings on the other hand come from the western side of the world where he shares really amazing knowledge based on the teachings of Bible, he shares it in a way to help people accomplish their goals. And then he used to share the teachings of Bible not as in a historical sense but it's more of a psychological one and according to him Christ as mentioned in the Bible is our own wonderful human imagination. So talking about the concept of desire based on Bhagavad Gita, desire is a really central theme. One of the greatest warriors of the history at the time refuses to battle because he said he had no desire of it. Lord Krishna, whose teaching book is based upon, he encourages the warrior Arjuna to battle instead of just wallowing in the misery. And the Gita teaches us the concept of detachment from the fruit of action. What it means is, as we start progressing towards our journey of accomplishing our goals, we should be completely detached of the outcome. Because the more attachment or the more expectation we start having towards our outcome, the more miserable we start becoming because these kinds of attachment and the unfulfillment of it creates anger, misery, and all kinds of negative emotions within us. The Bhagavad Gita advises us to perform our duties without becoming excessively attached to our outcomes, recognizing that the results are beyond our control. Now let's talk about Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption. Neville Goddard's Law of Assumption revolves around the power of our imagination and beliefs in shaping our reality. Our thoughts and assumptions are what creates our experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And in relation to our desire, Neville Goddard encourages us to live in the end and assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. By vividly imagining and embodying the state of having already achieved our desires, we align our conscious with that reality and attract it into our lives. That's why Neville Goddard urges us to confidently affirm that it is done and believe in the fulfillment of our desires. Despite their unique approaches, the Bhagavad Gita and Neville Goddard's teachings share remarkable similarities when it comes to desires. Both highlight the significance of understanding and directing our desires in the alignment of our higher selves. They emphasize the need to transcend excessive attachment or dependence on desires recognizing that they can hinder our spiritual growth and inner peace. While there are similarities, there are also distinct differences in the perspective. The Bhagavad Gita promotes detachment from the fruit of action and asks us to perform duties without seeking personal gain or attachment to the outcomes. On the other hand, Neville Goddard's teachings encourage active engagement with desires urging us to assume the fulfillment and embody the feeling of already having achieved them. 
both viewpoints offer really valuable insights into the complexity of desires and our relationship with them. But despite these differences, what we also have to understand is that when Neville Goddard asks you to live in the end, you should be living in the end as if your desire is already accomplished. That's a form of detachment in itself. Because the more we start worrying about the possibility of the outcome coming true or not, the more we are stepping away from the concept of living in the end. So in a way, even though Neville Goddard's teachings and Bhagavad Gita may seem really different because one is talking about detachment, other is talking about going after what you want in a way where it satisfies your own needs. The similarity lies in cultivating the kind of faith where you just do your job and you leave the rest to the universe, the God or the higher power. So when we think about desires, both the Bhagavad Gita and Neville Goddard's teachings assert that it is not the desires themselves that are inherently bad but rather our attachment, misuse or misalignment with them. Especially when our desires are determined by ego, greed, or harm to others, they can indeed be detrimental. However, when desires are approached with awareness, clarity, and a sense of higher purpose, they can be a catalyst for personal growth, manifestation, and even spiritual evolution. Personally, in my life, when I start visualizing a certain outcome, I imagine as if it's already happening in my mind's eye, and I really feel all the details in a vivid way where I practice sensing the sounds, the images, the visuals, and even the feelings with as much clarity as possible. Then once I do that, I just go about my day without even caring about it's going to happen or not. And this is essentially what the Bhagavad Gita is teaching you. You go out throughout the day without checking the 3D reality to see if it's already happening or not. Because most goals take time, right? And the more we start checking our 3D reality to see if there's any evidence of our desires manifesting or not, the more problematic that starts to become for us. Because we really get stuck up on manipulating the process rather than focusing on the end goal itself. That's why I think it's the combination of both of these that's really important when it comes to manifesting our desires. Even a lot of clients when they come to me, they are really really triggered by the 3D reality because they have goals set for themselves but they completely forget about their end goal and they look at the evidence of the 3D reality in this current moment of time and they get really tripped up by it. My first job is to just get them out of this state of constant attachment to the 3D outcomes. Because of course, my job is to guide them to become more aligned with their desires, their heartfelt desires. But I really encourage them to work on detaching themselves from the 3D reality. And sometimes it does mean taking your mind completely off your desire, but most times you don't even have to do that. The more you start cultivating the feeling of it is done as if your desires already happen, then there is no worry left. There is no anxiety left of whether this desire is going to manifest or not. And this is what makes the process of manifesting even more fulfilling rather than being in the state of constant desiring wanting and being miserable all the time that's why when we practice manifesting i think it's really important to detach from the 3d reality in my opinion it's completely okay to want something and have higher aspirations that lead us to a better life and the more better we start living the more fulfilled we are and that just radiates out of us and that creates an impact in our families our communities and the entire world so why not have these kinds of aspirations so as we conclude our exploration of bhagavad gita and neville Goddard's law of assumption we come to recognize that wanting or our desires are not inherently bad. Instead, it is our attitude, intention, and alignment with the higher principles that determine the impact of desires on our lives. Both these teachings emphasize the importance of self-awareness, detachment, and alignment with our higher selves when engaging with desires. And by understanding and integrating these teachings, we can navigate the intricate landscape of our desires using them as stepping stones for personal growth, manifestation, and spiritual evolution. Thank you again for joining us today as we explore the differences between similarities between Bhagavad Gita and Neville Goddard's law of assumption in context of desires, wanting, and detachment. Remember, desire or having aspirations towards life or accomplishing something isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the more detachment you cultivate towards the process of accomplishing it, the easier our lives are going to become. If you found any valuable insights, don't forget to leave it down in the comment section below. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. With that, I want to wish you all the very best. Happy manifesting. Goodbye and namaste.